Hey, Bliss, can I have my 200 back? I don't know, man. It's pretty hard to balance. Oh, come on. It's like one weapon in instead of two. Shut up and take the storm up. But what about player satisfaction, character growth? Here's a rat for your troubles. At least we have talents, gear, essences, a sexy rotation, and cool tips for you so you can start pumping some serious cool style points into your DK in 8.3. A quick disclaimer before we hit it like it has no right to vote. The guide will focus on the basics and fundamentals, giving you everything you need to start your frost journey or getting back into it if you have been playing Havoc. <laughs> Sorry, I have an aggressive reaction to empty action bars. The guide was also fact-checked by your DK boys who always lend a helping hand, so thanks guys. And the answer is still no, you cannot have your two-handers back. But we will cover the two main builds Frost is using based on the level 100 talent Ice Cap and Breath of Syndragosa respectively. Starting on the first row, take Cold Heart. This baby makes your Chains of Ice actually do damage. What it does is puts a scaling buff on you that grants a stack every few seconds capping at 20. Each stack increasing the damage Chains of Ice will do, then consuming all the stacks in the process. You can and should pair it with a big strength buff either from your cooldowns or a proc from a trinket or enchant, etc. Some people like to use Inexorable Assault, but right now it seems more of a comfort pick than a DPS increase since properly played, Cold Heart will outperform any day of the week. The main rule of Cold Heart is to cast it at the highest peak of strength you can reach. This can get as meticulous as you are willing to be in terms of tracking all your buffs and procs, so we will avoid the nitty gritty for now. Second row brings us two options. Runic Attenuation will be your choice if you go with the Breath of Syndragosa build. It passively generates runic power which is crucially good during your breath windows. Not much else to say, the entire row is based on resource generation and each option performs this differently. The alternative is Murderous Efficiency which works better for the Ice Cap build since it generates runes that you end up spending to reduce the cooldown of Pillar even further. Third row is the utility row and realistically all options have certain uses. Asphyxiate is your default choice. Arrange some that can be used on certain raids, ads or mobs in dungeons. It has all the uses a stun could provide so don't slack on stopping that cast or provide your tank with some breathing room. It works well on raid bosses like Hive Mind, where you have adds darting all around the room and you just want to hold them in a tight embrace and tell them about your people. Blinding Sleet is an AoE disorient that mainly functions as a disruption. Again, it can interrupt casts, which will probably be the main reason you will use it, since it breaks on damage taken. Death's Reach can have some very situational uses, mostly taken for the increase in your grab range. Judge it yourself if it's worth losing a stun over it. We won't recommend this just yet though. The other two, however, can still be used for the thing from beyond if you're running enough corruption. Next up, take Frozen Pulse in single target scenarios, mostly raiding, and there when you don't have a high uptime on multiple targets. The kicker with this is that it performs when you have two or fewer runes available, which should be the case, with or without this option since you passively regenerate three runes at once anyway, and having one more on cooldown means you passively do more damage, which is a big plus. Not to mention, during Breath of Syndragosa, you will undoubtedly have few runes to begin with. Frost Scythe will be your AoE counterpart, replacing your obliterates when fighting multiple targets and applying the Razor Ice debuff in an AoE fashion as well. One thing to note though, when in the Breath of Syndragosa window, if you are getting low on runic power, even in AoE, this might not be a good button to press since the runic power return per global used is a lot less than when using Obliterate. But that would be the only AoE situation when it would not be that good to use Froth Sight. Row number 5 is the survivability row. We are talking mobility and taking shit to the face like a man since you had the right to vote for longer. Hey, I am single. Wraith Walk will be your best mobility choice and only mobility choice as a talent. I mean, it's no secret Death Knights are one of the slowest classes in the game and the uses of this talent are pretty straightforward. 
Death Pack is good when you need a chunk of health to survive a hit, to relieve pressure of your healers or simply soak a dangerous mechanic or dungeon affix. It will absorb incoming healing after you press it so it kinda acts like a loan where you get a bunch of health and then the healer will spend his or her mana, energy, dreams and one kidney to pay off the missing healing. Permafrost is a passive absorb shield you generate from auto attacking. This is a set and forget option where it works better if you don't need mobility or have a use for death pack, making it the simple talent on this row. Next up we have Gathering Storm as the best DPS output on the row provided you play it right. This also works with the Frozen Tempest as a right trait which we will discuss in a bit. Although you will use Remorseless Winter on cooldown, you still want to make sure you can pump runes into it after you cast it. A situational alternative is Frostworm's Fury. Overall this provides less DPS gain but gives you a big AoE burst for very specific encounters like a pack of ads you want to die really really quickly. You can snap it with powerful buffs similar to cold heart usage, but overall we recommend Gathering Storm as the default choice here. Last on the menu, the coup de gras, the creme de la creme, the omelet du fromage, Breath of Syndragosa. Yep, this will be your best DPS choice if you learn to play it properly. It's not that easy, I know, especially if you are starting out as Frost, I know. But it's not hard either, just takes a bit of practice. Playing this properly will separate the good Death Knights from the Havoc Demon Hunters. What? The alternative is Ice Cap for the Ice Cap build with the talents mentioned earlier. Ice Cap essentially is easier to manage but also a bit misunderstood. As soon as you are not hitting your targets, so have any amount of downtime, Ice Cap will suffer in performance. If Breath of Syndragosa needs to be interrupted, then that is potentially even worse, but if you can time your breath where you don't have to break it, any other downtime is not as bad since your breath will regenerate its cooldown during those seconds where you cannot hit the boss. As opposed to Ice Cap that has to have you constantly hitting the target to reduce pillar cooldown and anytime you are not doing this you are losing the value Ice Cap is supposed to provide you with. In conclusion, they both suffer from downtime but where you can plan for breath and mitigate that issue, you cannot do so for Ice Cap. The Ice Cap build can actually work really nicely in Horrific Vision since the encounter pattern doesn't favor breath all that much. There are two main ways you can approach stats. This is important when choosing equal eye level pieces of gear or rings and trinkets. The most reliable and admittedly tedious way is to sim your gear and or stat priority with websites such as Raidbot. It's weird, we know, BFA is a game where you never know what an upgrade is, mostly because stats scale with each other and once you get too much of your strongest stat, your others will be mathematically better for you. The other way is to keep a healthy balance between them following the general stat priority. You won't deal the most amount of damage possible, but the difference will be in the single percentile digits. Crit and Mastery are almost tied at the top with Haste following very closely behind. This can work better in raids or whenever you want to kill one target as fast as you can. In AoE, either raids or dungeons, go with Mastery first, then Crit with Haste and again versatility a bit lower down the list. So just to make it simple, get as much Mastery and Crit as you can and when you cannot, Fill in with haste and all of this if you don't want to sim. For the purpose of the guide, we will keep the consumables crit centric, but keep in mind that the best way to enchant and gem yourself is by following your stat priority. As such, get the Accord of Critical Strike and Deadly Lava Lazuli for rings and sockets. You can also include a Leviathan's Eye of Strength in one of the sockets, since you can only have one of it anyway. For the weapons, put Razor Eyes on the main hand and Fallen Crusader on the off hand. The reason for this is actually pretty good. When you use Frost Scythe, this skill will apply Razor Eyes in a cleave situation only if Razor Eyes is on your main hand. The Flask will be the highest strength option, no secrets here. Unbridled Fury and Focused Resolve will perform the best in pure single target scenarios, while Superior Battle Potion of Strength works better for up to 3 targets and in power proximity on 4 plus targets. For the food, get Feast if possible, for the big strength buff, and if not, the secondary staff food of your choice, in this case, 
McDowell's Big Mac will work best as the next best thing. Now let's get to the juicy bits. Big butts, no, Azerite traits. In raids and mostly single target fights, you want Icy Citadel stacked three times. This will be the most used trait and you want to always stack it if possible. Due to the nature of Azerite in the current raid tier, you can essentially fill the rest of the pieces up with Heart of Darkness as stab boosts which work really great. Of course, you need the base corruption to activate the trait, but that shouldn't be a problem. By the time you get three Hearts of Darkness, you should have some corrupted items. You can also squeeze in a Frozen Tempest if you don't have any other options, or use some generic stat trait procs which you usually get from the Titan Residue vendor. You can take this build into Mythic Dungeon since it focuses on Big Breath of Syndragosa Windows. Lower keys might not provide you with the value Breath does in large pools that stay alive for its full effect, so squeezing in even more Frozen Tempest will work really well. For the Ice Cap alternative, switch to Frost Whelp Indignation and stack it as many times as you want. The Mastery buff can be good for any build, but works especially well when you can hit multiple targets, and with the Ice Cap build giving you more and more pillar casts, this will end up being a good fuel for your DPS. You can fill in the rest of the slots with Icy Citadel and Frozen Tempest stacked as much as you can. Any other empty slot you can fill in with generic stat procs again since the other frost traits are a bit underwhelming. To be fair, you have a bit more liberty here and it's difficult to say what is the best. For instance, stacking Icy Citadel three times can scale like crazy since you'll almost have back-to-back -back pillars of frost if played properly or close to it anyway with ice cap builds. The essences provide a bit more wiggle room when it comes to your options, with a few new players entering the field. Your number one major in raids will be World Vein Resonance, regardless if other people have it or not. You pop it for the strength buff to funnel gas into your breath, chains and even worm if you run it, just like we talked about in the talent section. You can normally have every other cast of it ready for a Breath of Syndragosa window. The Major will start to lose value when you have to move a lot and get out of its range, so you can take Blood of the Enemy instead, which will actually be your default option in dungeons. Blood of the Enemy works better that way since it debuffs your target, making movement away from the start position irrelevant and it should be used with every breath cast. As miners, Memory of Lucid Dreams is the clear numero uno with Breath of the Dying pumping some serious numbers even at lower ranks. Last spot can be Conflict and Strife since the versatility buff is, well, versatile for all builds, but if you run Ice Cap in raids, you can replace it with Focusing Iris. The reason you don't have Iris everywhere else is because it loses value when you have to switch targets often, which you do, often. Other than this, play with what you have, just like I do at night, and see what performs best for you, unless you just sim everything. One little footnote here, Conflict and Strife Major is a fun option to use for the chill streak ability it gives. It scales with huge mastery levels and it's a very consistent AoE option if your targets are stacked closely together. I run this in Horrific Visions and I wholeheartedly recommend it. Trinkets follow the build rule, as in Breath has different good options than Ice Cap, meaning you want unused trinkets to pump into your Breath window for max amounts of damage. Last Raid's Font of Power will be your top contender if you can get it at a high eye level. While you're at it, Ashvane's Razor Coral is also an amazing pair with it. These two can still Titan for it, so depending on your time, energy, stress levels and how single you like to be, you can farm these as your BIS options. Ashvane's Coral has unique uses and it drops in value when you have to target switch or your target disappears like on the Skitra fight. You can replace it with other good on-use options like Vial of Animated Blood or the Gladiator's Badge and similar options. These pop with big strength boosts and are good funnels for your breath windows. Alternatively, you can aim for the Raden set if you play Ice Cap. It can take a little while to get based on your luck levels of course, but if that's a big chore, you can also aim for options like the Gore Cross the Butcher's Block while Torment in a Jar is a good alternative for AoE situations. The new raid came with corrupted weapons and before you get excited, I will have to be the bearer of bad news. There is no Santa Claus. Nah, I'm joking. The magic of Christmas is definitely alive, but raid weapons are shit for you. The only corrupted weapon is Pharalos from Rathion, which can only see play if it's the only corruption you have. 
Sorry, not even Santa can get you a better option. Although, you can still loot a normal weapon that corrupts and there are some corruption effects that work really well for you. Infinite Stars shares its performance conditions with the Coral Trinket from Ashvade, in that you really want to be fighting one target only since it loses value once you add more enemies that can effectively steal charges of the debuff, lowering its overall damage output. As an alternative, you can go with Twilight Devastation for Cleave and AoE fights. This does way more damage, but it can be RNG in its proc. You can mitigate it by doing harder content where the longer you are in combat, the higher the chance that the RNG will not negatively impact you. Severe and Gushing Wounds are also very good damage sources for their corruption costs and can help easily fit into your gear set when you need to manage more or less corruption to keep yourself under a certain cap. Simpler alternatives are Void Ritual and Twisted Appendage. Depending on your gear, you will have to choose what to wear and sometimes even secondary stat corruptions can be good if you lack serious alternatives. When playing Breath of Syndragosa, you open by pre-potting, if you want, and obliterating three times while consuming any rhyme procs with Howling Blasts. Cast Empower Rune Weapon and Whirlvane Resonance, cast Pillar and Breath of Syndragosa, then use Remorseless Windsor. You continue the rotation by prioritizing obliterates, especially when below 30 runic power, Remorseless Windsor uptime, rhyme procs into Howling Blasts, obliterates to prevent rune capping or at low runic power levels. After this, just cast the obliterates any other time, usually not when you have more than 73 runic power, so as to not waste any. This is the universal opener for breath with an ability priority to maintain breath for as long as you can. Procs and such can differ since they are RNG, so adapt accordingly. You also want to use Cold Heart either just before pillar drops if you also have Unholy Strength proc, or during Icy Citadel if you have at least two of these traits stacked. This is just to give you a sense, but really Cold Heart and Frostworm Fury and even Chill Streak, if you use it, should be cast at maximum amounts of strength and that depends on your procs and gear. Remorseless Winter is important if you have Gathering Storm or Frozen Tempest, which ideally you should, otherwise it could end up being a 0 DPS increase and a 0 DPS loss by casting it on only one target. Outside Breath or if you are running Ice Cap, the priority is simple. Consume Rhyme with Howling Blast as numero uno most important thing to do. Cast Obliterate when you have two or more runes ready to take advantage of Frozen Pulse. Cast Frost Strike when above 73 runic power. Consume Killing Machine procs on Obliterate, otherwise just cast Obliterate and Frost Strike if nothing else lines up. One quick little note is that if you are playing Ice Cap, hence the Murderous Efficiency talent, you can bank up to 75 runic power instead. Not a big difference, but something to make things clear. In AoE, you keep Remorseless Winter up if you have Gathering Storm, which you should have, and spend the runic power if it's about to come off cooldown to maximize the rune usage during its uptime. Consume Rhyme procs with Howling Blast. Consume Killing Machine procs with Frost Scythe. Prevent runic power capping with Frost Strike. Cast Remorseless Winter regardless of talents. Fill in with Frost Sights and Frost Strikes otherwise. The idea is that these are just the order of abilities based on their importance, not the actual order in which you press them, since it matters what procs you have, what else is available and so on. One quick note and general tip is realizing the conversion of runic power into runes from the passive runic empowerment. Whenever you spend runic power, this has a chance to proc and regenerate runes back. The more runic power you consume, the more runes you get back. This is why Breath of Syndragosa gives you so many runes back. This is why you want to forcibly attempt to proc this whenever you know you want to consume a bunch of runes really fast, like in a Remorseless Winter window or Ice Cap window and so on. The guide focuses on the basics and fundamentals and gives you everything you need to start your frost journey in Dungeons and Raids, but there's a lot more to get into when it comes to frost decay. So check the Accurate Discord channel for a lot of other details that the top DK players have already theorycrafted and tested and got ready for you. And speaking of the devils, 
Thank you to Banter DK, The Grain, So, and Bicep Pumps for all of the feedback you guys gave us for the Frost DK guide and all of the work you essentially do for the DK community. Not to mention, Biceps Pump is the author of the Wowhead Frost DK and Unholy DK guide. So go check that out. And of course, thank you to the patrons for all of the support you guys are giving us. We really, really appreciate it. Hope it shows. And you guys are a big part of why we can do this full time and provide you with higher and higher quality every other video. Thank you for watching the video. We hope it helped and we'll see you in the next one.